Hello, and welcome to another episode of Sporty's Flight Simulator How-To Videos. Today we are going to focus on how to configure the Redbird Alloy Yoke with the new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 program. So let's go and get started. We'll begin by heading on over to the controls screen, and as you can see it recognizes our keyboard and our mouse. I'll go ahead and plug in the Redbird Alloy Yoke right now, and as you can see it populates on the screen. But as we click on it, you'll notice it does not recognize this component. So we're going to have to go ahead and input all the controls ourselves. So let's run a sensitivity test. I'm going to roll the yoke to the left first. All right, we see that's left axis X. And then let's go ahead and push the yoke forward. Full deflection, OK, and aft. All right, so that will be left axis Y. Now you'll notice that left axis Y has, sits a little bit off the base. I found that's not an issue when flying. Uh, but with left axis X, the roll, it does stop about a third of the way short. So we're going to have to go ahead and address that. And one of the ways I've found that works best or simulates roll of a Cessna 172 is changing the sensitivity to one third. So we'll carry that to about 34%. And as I now roll, it comes a little bit closer. It still looks like there's a gap, but I can confirm that this is more accurate to the roll rate of a 172. And I'd advise tweaking it based off the bird you're going to find the most. But that will help. So left axis X is roll, left axis Y is pitch. And let's go ahead and start applying these to what we want to happen in the simulator. So first we'll go ahead and head on over to flight controls. And in our primary flight controls, we'll find aileron axes. We know that is going to be left axis X. So I'm going to scroll on down. And let's test it. Rolling left. OK. Rolling right. And again, we see that gap. Uh, but that is going to happen naturally. OK. And then let's go ahead and apply pitch. That will be left axis Y. And for all these buttons, I have created a map of what buttons on the hardware piece apply to which number. So we will cover that next. As I push forward on the yoke and pull all the way aft, it looks like elevator axes is where I like it. OK. So let's move on next. We're going to go to trim. And I'm going to use the two rocker on the left handle, just like you would find in uh, Cessna 172. And that two rocker, the top part is button three and bottom part is button four. So let's apply those. So trim down should be the top, just like in a plane. So I'm going to apply that to number three. And again, all these numbers are mapped on Sporty's Redbird Alloy page. All right, so trim down works the way I'd like. Let's do trim nose up, which will be four. Let's test them. All right, that looks good. Next, let's move on to toggling of landing gear. I'm going to go ahead and set this for the autopilot button, which is number two. And let's test that. Perfect. And then another setting I really enjoy is the active pause. There are multiple times I need to pause the game and go do something. So I'm going to set that to number one, which is the push to talk button on our yoke. And again, you don't have to do this. This just works best for me. If you get into VFR communications, obviously you'll want to put that push to talk button somewhere else. All right, next we are going to get into some of the camera options, which will use the right the hat switch on the right side of this yoke. What I've found is the ones that work best for me are slewing and translating. Now the, the hat switch, the right side is number five, the top is number six. I'm sorry, the bottom is number five, right is number six, up is number seven, left is number eight, and pushing it down is number nine. So at first I want to go ahead and find slew translate down and think of this as you're in the airplane and your head is just moving down all right so slew translate down 
Let's test it. Five. Okay. So when I push down on the hat switch straight down, I move down. Here we have slu translate up, and that will be number seven because it's counterclockwise five, six, seven, eight. Starting at the bottom. Seven's the top. Okay. Now let's find slu translate right. Oh, this is slu y'all left. We want to go ahead and remove that. Click on here. Clear current input, validate it. All right, there's your 101 on how to clear out a command. Here we go, slew translate right. So that should be number six. We'll come back to that. Slew translate left, let's get that taken care of. Okay, and it works. should be number six. Let's validate it. Right, okay, perfect. And then lastly, another feature I like is cockpit slash external view mode. It's helpful while flying. I'm gonna make that the push down button, which is number nine on the hat. Test it. All right, that is applied where I would like. So now we've applied all the keys we'd like to. Let's scroll over from all to assigned and make sure everything we applied is still in here. The slew mode, so I'm gonna roll from the bottom counterclockwise all the way around and you'll see it shows five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then pushing down, that'll take us outside the airplane or back inside. Primary flight controls, rolling of the aileron, Still looks good and pulling back and pushing forward of the elevator looks good. Elevator is acting as is. Trim works correctly. Toggling of landing gear looks good. And our push to talk for active pause looks set. Okay, everything's where we wanted it. We're going to apply and save. Make sure the rolling wheel is there. That will confirm what we've put in here is going to do what we'd like, and that concludes our video today. We hope this was helpful in setting up your Redbird alloy yoke with the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 program. We will have additional videos on our YouTube channel, and we hope you'll tune in. Thank you, and have a great one.